Hello everybody, my name is Dennis. Today we're going to do swapping CPUs. So I have a motherboard that I had a um, KB Lake processor for, but when I got it, I had to upgrade the BIOS in order for it to accept the KB Lake processor. So I'm kind of moved on and I've got a better motherboard and I still have the Skylake processor that I had originally in it before I upgraded it to KB Lake. So I thought, you know what, might be a good idea to show you guys what happens if you switch that CPU back. So today's video is about switching your CPU from a KB Lake back to a Skylake after you've done the BIOS and what happens. So hope you like it. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to swap the CPU from this system here because I'm going to be building a new system and the processor in this one is actually better and more suited to the motherboard that I'm going to put it into. So I'm going to put the Celeron processor in this motherboard and take the KB Lake processor that's in this one and put it in the other motherboard. And then we're going to put the Celeron in this, fire it up, Everything should be exactly the same. There should be really no differences. But let's find out. Let's see what happens when you swap processors in a computer. Next, we're going to take off the CPU cooler. Which, in this case, is not really that difficult. There's a screw that holds it on down here. And there's an identical one on the other side. So we're going to loosen it off and we'll be able to just take it right off. Now something to keep in mind is while you can get to the screw down here, which I've already taken out, in order to get the one on this side, you have to take this fan off first. So it's just a matter of disconnecting here. Alright, so take that off. And the one on the other side will probably just come right off pretty simply. That was a lot more difficult to get off than I thought it was going to be. Because there's really not a whole lot of room to get your fingers in there and take that off. But it's off now. And I'm just going to loosen this other screw down here. And then we're just going to take it off. Alright, so that one's loose. And we're going to do the same thing to the other side. I didn't completely loosen it. I just took it off a little bit. Now when you go to take one of these off, because it's been on there for a while, sometimes they can be quite stiff. So you might have to just move it around a bit and just to get it to come off. There, that actually was much easier than I thought it'd be. Now you got to be careful because when you take this off, this piece will slide out. See that piece right there? It'll slide out so because it just sits in this little groove. So you got to be careful with that. Now you can see where your thermal paste was and how good it was on there. It was good spread and it'll be the same thing on the um, bracket that's on the motherboard. So we're just going to take that off I'm not going to take the bracket off because I'm going to reuse this CPU. I'm going to put it back on. So to remove your CPU, all you have to do is lift down on this little piece. Just push down. It'll come up. All right. Now, because of the bracket, it's not going to lift up quite right. So you're just going to lift that up. Now, carefully, you know, grab it from the sides. Of course, I'm grounding myself to make sure. And I'm just going to grab that up out of there. Be careful because you do not want to drop it. So the next thing we're going to do is clean the thermal paste off this one to put it in the other motherboard. But that's for another day. And we're going to put the uh, Celeron CPU in this one. And I'll show you how that's done. And just one more thing. That's why you always want to keep these little plastic things that your CPU come in. So when you're done and you're taking this one off and you want to just set it somewhere for a couple of seconds, you can just set it inside. Okay, now it's not exactly the right size for this one, but at least it allows me to set it inside and keep it away from everything. And I'll take that thermal paste off later and, and that way it protects it. So here's our Celeron G3900, which is an LGA 1151, which is what this motherboard is. And we're just going to take it out. And we're going to install it. And it's just sitting right there.
So in case you're wondering as well, this CPU also came with a uh, with its own uh, Intel cooler, which I am not going to use because the other one is much better. Okay, and for anybody that's not familiar or not used to putting in an Intel CPU, you see that little gold triangle there in the corner? Okay, right here. Okay, you have to make sure when you line it up with your processor, uh, your socket, that you put it in the same spot. So if you can't tell where the triangle is on this one because you can't see it, here's the second thing you can look for. So you see these little pivots on here? One there, and there's another one right there. Well, when you look on your CPU, okay, when you look on your CPU, you can see them on the top. Okay, so you've got one here, and you got one there. All right, and when you set it in, you're just going to set it in there. Line those up, and it's just going to set in there. Okay, just make sure it's nice. Don't push it or force it. All right. And now we're going to put our thermal paste on, put our other cooler on, and that's all there is to it. Now before you do that though, you do the same thing as we did before. Now there's this little coin, well, little screw here. So when you put this down, and I'm just going to use it uh, carefully, all right, you're going to let it go down with that arm, and you want to make sure that this slides underneath of that screw, okay? And then when you push it down, there's going to be a little bit of uh, tension, all right, and it goes down, and you want to make sure it goes out, and then goes underneath, all right? Make sure you can see that. Okay, so I just took it out from here. I'll show you again. Okay, take it out and then in. And then it's locked in place. Now you can go ahead, put your thermal paste on, put your cooler back on, and that's it. Okay, so that really wasn't the aim of the video, but I just thought I'd show that to you since I'm doing it. So I'll put on the CPU paste just so you can see how that's done. Uh, or thermal paste, thermal grease. They all go by different names, but basically a thermal paste is the most commonly referred term. And how you put it on, it varies. Uh, I like to do either a P method or the X. Uh, so it's up to you which preference you want to do. And you just take your thermal paste, put it down here. And I'm just going to do a little grain of rice. That's it. That's actually plenty. And you just want to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And that's it. And now you're ready to put your cooler back on. And you put it on. Don't over tighten. Okay. So it's on there good and snug. And that's not going to come off. And our CPU and th uh, CPU cooler are now in place. Just got to put the fan back on. And then we're going to start it up. And see how this experiment actually turns out. Okay, so everything's back in. So all we have to do now is just fire it up. Make sure to see if everything's working. So everything's done. The only thing we have left is power it on. And if we see something on the screen, we know we're successful and everything's good to go. So let's do that. Well, it's a good start. Okay, so we're going to hit F1 to run the setup. That's normal when you've switched things around. I'm just going to move this in so you can see better. So, everything is good. So we can see that our XMP is disabled. That's no problem. I can fix that afterward. Alright, so it's showing our Celeron processor, 3900, 2.8 gigahertz. Running at 2800 megahertz. All right, you can see we have 8 gig of DDR4. Yeah, everything's running just fine. And you can see our hard drives on the right hand side there, the two SATA drives. And that's it. So we're just going to hit F10 to save and exit. And it says, okay, we haven't made any changes, which is fine. Just hit enter and it should boot back up, do through its process again. And this time everything should come up perfect. And there we go. Windows is starting up the way it should be. 
So now the one question left is, what about Windows? Is it still activated? Because we've changed the Intel processor. So you've swapped the 6th gen for 7th gen, and now we switch the 7th gen back to a 6th gen. Is it going to work? Well, it's thinking about it. And there we go. And there we are. We're back to our screen. So let's go in and see if Windows actually... So I kept all our settings. It's changed the uh, settings because I took the graphics card out. So we're going to go into the settings, and we're going to see if it says Windows is still activated. Okay, so we're just going to go down here, go to settings, go to system, go down to about. And if we scroll down, we can see our processor and Windows 10 Pro. And to get to our info, we go related settings, system info. And okay, so it just readjusted on the fly. So what it just did is it reset the original settings for the graphics card. So that's kind of good to know. And we go in here and we go down. So down here it says Windows is activated and you're good to go. So I hope that helps somebody. That swapping out your CPU that you already have in there, say you have a uh, Skylake, you want to swap it out because your motherboard accommodates a Kiwi Lake processor, which was one of the things I did in the previous video. And now I just switched them back. And as you can see, Windows is still activated. So I hope that helps somebody if you're ever thinking about doing this. All right, everybody. So I hope you liked that video. If you hit like it, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. Leave me a comment. Or if you got any questions, leave those. Think about subscribing. Think about if you need YouTube Buddy, click on that link in my channel. Uh, helps me out. And it'll give you a free program that you can use. Um, I also have PayPal if you want to help support my channel. Not at all required, but I'm just putting it out there. And so, that's the video. So I hope you liked it. Uh, basically, I swapped it out. The Windows stayed activated. It's now running a Celeron processor, just as good as it ever would. And because it's a lower end motherboard that I put it into, I felt it was a better fit to have the Celeron in it. And because I've upgraded to a better motherboard, I'm going to take the KB Lake processor and put it in that motherboard. And I'll just get more performance out of the motherboard, everything else. Uh, it'll just work better for me. Um, and I'll have a, a new videos coming out on that. So if you want to see those new videos, Hit that bell so you get notifications so when my future videos are coming out. Alright, that's it. Got any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.